In this video, I want to show you how to um, program the Theory Audio Design loudspeaker controller, also known as the ALC1809, with the Automator software. If I fire up the software, bring it here. I've got other software here because we're also a distributor for Pro Audio Technology, which is the bigger brother loudspeaker system from Theory Audio Design. I've got the latest software here from the Theory Audio Design website that you can download. It's for Windows. I'm connected to um, an ALC loudspeaker controller via USB, not network. Um, that option's not available, just USB. Overall, this should take most installers about 15 minutes to commission. Just down here in the rack, you can see the Theory loudspeaker controller in silver. It's one U high, has nine amplifier channels built in. And um, just above that, we're using an AVR as an AV processor. So the uh, amplifiers in that AVR are not being used, just the RCA pre-outs and a few settings in the AVR. We're just behind the rack now. Here you can see the uh, AVR preamp outputs on RCAs, and they are connected to the uh, the input section of the uh, Theory controller. Uh, just over here, you see all the loudspeaker connections, beginning with the subs, moves along to centre, left, right, and Atmos speakers at the end. Okay, they're on large Phoenix Phoenix connectors. This is the Theory Audio Design system that we have here in the showroom. There's two sub-15 subwoofers. Under this 75-inch uh, TV is the SB75 left, center, right sound bar. Uh, over here, got, that's one of the two side surround speakers, SB25, and in the ceiling, Theory Audio Design IC6, pair of those. In your AV processor, there's only a couple of things you're gonna set. Uh, for one, you're probably not gonna need to use Odyssey or Dirac or any auto EQ software with a Theory Audio Design system. You can if you want to, but um, it's not normally recommended. But you're gonna set all your loudspeaker settings to large, so there's no bass management happening in the processor. That will all happen in the Theory loudspeaker controller and also set your processor to 5.1 or 7.1.4, whatever your speaker arrangement is. How many loudspeaker controllers does your system use? Well, the maximum is two with Theory Audio Design, which would run the left side of a room and the right side of the room, but most systems probably use one, so select one here. Uh, how many front loudspeakers do you have? So um, I'm picking in our system here, in our sh demo showroom, we have a sound bar, uh, some systems you might have three speakers behind a, a screen, for example, for um, if it's not a TV, but you're using it with home cinema. We're using a soundbar. Uh, in this simple system, we just have two side speakers, side surrounds. We're using no rear surround speakers. We're using two subwoofers. And we've got two Atmos speakers installed. Click OK. And just down here, it's giving you information about um, its connection. See more of that in a second. Firstly, you, you, you can see a render here of the system, and it kind of changes on the fly as you change the type of speakers you've got connected or the amount of them. Down here is fantastic. It's advice on how to connect your inputs from the AVR or AV processor. They're all on Phoenix connectors. They're on the left side of the rear panel next to the trigger, next to the USB connection for the software. On the right hand side are the loudspeaker connections themselves and the power connection of course. And over here on the bottom right it's showing that we're connected to one loudspeaker controller which will be operating all the speakers sort of left and right and center and subs of course. If there were two you'd see them both here, two controllers. Back over here, so the speaker layout is as we already set earlier. Then you just come up to section two, because I'm in the UK, we use meters most of the time, and we've got four tabs there, so we start with the front speakers. Here you select the speaker model from Theory Audio Design. There's a couple of models in there as well from Pro Audio Technology. So for example, I pick soundbar, it auto-populates the center and front right. 
then you're going to enter the measurements from the main listening position to uh, the speaker itself. So let's pop in three meters for all of them. Even though left and right are a little bit further away, but they don't reach it to the next point there, 3.25. So keep that three meters. Um, then this is really interesting. This part's quite unique to pro and uh, theory audio design. Um, they want you to let them know what, or the software wants to know how far you are from the nearest wall. So the sound bar is on the wall, but let's say it was mounted half a meter away from the wall or more, that would adjust the EQ for the sound bar to help compensate for the wall boundary effect, which affects the sound quite a lot. So you want to get those settings right. And then down here, distance to the nearest corner. Again, you've got 0.5 meters or over one meter. The soundbar probably won't be near a corner, but a subwoofer almost definitely would. So if you just see here, for example, if we'd picked a sub 15, um, you'd enter the, the distance. That might be three and a half meters, for example, from the listening position. But very important here, these settings in particular, if it's against the wall, then it's going to need a lot less power from the controller than if it was, say, two meters away from the wall and a different EQ. And again, with distance to the nearest corner, if it's in the corner, again, a lot less power, a different EQ um, compared to if it was more than three meters from the corner. These contribute towards um, keeping the theory sound as it should be for best performance. So I've now entered all the information for all the speakers and now I can apply the settings to the uh, ALC. So we hit that button there. That'll take a couple of minutes. So now you've applied the settings and activated the system. What happens now is you get to um, check it. So play some of your favorite surround sound Dolby Atmos content uh, that you know well. What it's encouraging you to do is trim the subwoofer level. I often find this work ends up being back around zero because it's not just adjusting the LFE output, but the bass management as well. A couple of occasions I've had to boost it slightly, maybe because there's a, a bass drop at the seating position. Once you're happy with that, you know, take 15 minutes, 20 minutes to really listen to surround music and video content and then you can commit. You close that and then you're going to save to controller. That takes a couple of minutes as well. Now the uh, settings are saved to the controller. Everything is locked away. As I mentioned before, there's barely any settings that you've used on the uh, AVR or AV processor, as in there's nothing much to mess up there over the next few years while this system uh, is used by various people. Um, so it's all quite secure. The only time you need to plug this in again is if there's a major change to the system, like a couple more speakers are added or two ALCs as an upgrade for more power to all the speakers. So yeah, that's done and you're ready to hand over the system to the client. Hope you found that video useful. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe below. See you next time.